The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interests of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. Today let's travel to Hopkins, to the K-Hop Television Studio in the Hopkins Schools. Faculty members Sue McLeod and Jeanette Shoup will tell us about a program involving students of all ages in television production and helping those students learn how to become creative and critical television viewers. I'm Sue McLeod and I'm a member of the K-HOP television studio staff and Jeanette Shupp and I particularly work with elementary age students and junior high age students in television production and what we hope to do when working with the students is help them become better television viewers, more aware television viewers, wiser about the tricks and techniques used in television so that when they're at home watching a show they're actually participating and understanding rather than simply absorbing what's happening on the screen. We also hope to get them so excited about production that they will produce quality shows that have good content and perhaps eventually get into the field of television and help upgrade what's on for children. We also think that having children in television production helps them in all phases of learning in their lives. Um, certainly it involves a great deal of problem solving, a great deal of preparation and research and logical thinking. So those are all things that we hope to do when we work with students. We also find that when working with children in television that children learn how to cooperate with one another and it's also very important to us that the children become, rather than being passive viewers of television, that they become much more critical viewers of TV. And we feel that by learning how to make their own productions, they will gain the skills necessary to really be critical viewers when they do watch TV. Students uh, become involved with KHOP TV because they're interested in learning how to use the equipment they find the technical aspect of it interesting and they decide to take the certification class. Once they're involved with KHOP TV, they learn how to produce a show. And they have produced many shows over the last year. The students at KHOP TV have produ produced 77 shows throughout the district, original shows. Um, they tape documentaries, they tape plays, they tape um, commercials for their schools and they tape their own um, imaginative productions. My name is Gina Rose and I'm from um, Al Smith School and um, well I got interested in filming from like my grandma and grandpa they live in Oregon and they've given us a lot of tapes of home movies and they've always wanted one from us and not, nobody in our family knew how to film. So when I heard about the class, I decided to take the class. Well, I got involved in, in television because um, I just saw some people taping and it looked like fun and you know I just thought I'd try it out and I guess I just got into it more as I started like editing and stuff. I'm Philip Wright from Tangman Elementary in Hopkins and I got involved with telev television production um, in 1986 and I always watched TV and I wondered how they made productions and how they, you know, got people to be here and then here and then up there. It always fascinated me and I just wanted to try it. 
Okay, we did the um, 86, 87 talent show at Tanglin. We did we did two um, student teachers over at Tanglin. We taped them for to show to principals so they know if they want to hire them or not, so they know how they teach. And we did um, we did one production called Among All the Students. I'm the poet, and that was um, people from all the all the Hopkins Elementary schools that had written poems. They came and they um, read them and. They had pictures in the background and stuff, and um, we got a teddy for that one, for excellence. My poem never stops moving like the wind on top of a mountain. My poem stands out on the page like a field of roses in a sun shower. My poem sings before it rests, and when I wake it, it plays a different tune. My poem may not be read and seen like dust in a shadow, but when you open the window, the light shines on it, and it brings it back. Excuse me, back to life from a deep sleep. My poem will live in the eyes only of those who read it, and the poem can hear itself like in a coma, and then will revive. My poem will bring joy only unto those who can see it and feel it in their hearts, like a small flame, and then putting kindling on it so the fire of my poem will burn inside them. Thank you. I'm Katie Pratt, and I go to Tangley Elementary in Hopkins. I'm a sixth grader. I got involved in TV production because I like acting and drama, and I kind of wanted to see how it's filmed and what goes on behind the scenes, and besides just the acting part of it. Hi, my name's Joe Wright, and I'm from Tangley Elementary, and I'm in fifth grade. The reason that I got into television productions are because um, I saw like Steve and Philip and Katie um, doing a lot of productions and I thought it would be really fun. So that's why I got into doing productions. I worked on the Tangland Talent Show, um, 1987-88, and I edited a lot of it and it, there were so many different acts and you had to put it together and you had to have everything kind of blend in together. from making a production that uh, lots of techniques on TV, you know, I've learned about them and how you can do them and, and just even if we do little plays like with our cousins or whatever, now I know how to do them better and use techniques better and stuff. I used to believe more things that I saw in the commercials, but now I realize that they're just, like Rachel said, techniques and stuff that are not real. The things I've been working on are like we've been learning other techniques like um, we um, did a commercial and we learned how to make people appear and disappear and we did like um, we did it like things in sequence and stuff. What, I, what have I seen differently is um, when you're watching a TV show they can um, make somebody appear to be a lot different than what they really are. And in a commercial, um, it's really different because they use so many special effects and everything. So it's like you can't really see the truth of it. At North Junior High, I worked on Tubular Tales of the Magical Manhole. It's 
with uh, Bill Campbell and Sue McLeod and Mr. Hoho, Patrick Hoho. And we did, that's all a makeup play. It wasn't about anything at all, except a magical manhole. Many of the skills that the students learn when they're working with the cameras, they can use later on in their lives. They can use in the school classroom situation. They learn communication skills. They learn writing skills. They learn how to work together as a group. These are all things that they can carry over into school. To use the camera, it was kind of neat because I've never done it before. And the microphone, I've it was, it was neat because you get to hold on and it's all yours at the time and the tape deck over here is, um, is uh, it was really different from a VCR. I usually do um, like sound, audio, that kind of stuff and, and the Chiron, so, and I edit sometimes too. You learn that you, if you make a mistake, and it's not live, it's okay because, I mean, you can always fix it and you can always change things, <laughs> yeah, change things around if you don't like what you did. Mm -hmm. After the students have finished creating their production, doing the script writing, shooting their raw footage, they come to the K-Hop studios and learn how to edit on our editing machines. And we find that um, we are able to teach a few students at a time. They take turns. Some One will work on the player deck while the other one will work on the recorder deck. And again, it fosters co cooperation. Good. When I was editing Tubular Tales of the Magical Manhole, um, there was it was a lot of fun editing. It was with Bill Campbell and Sue McLeod. It was real fun. We had we had some tough times finding out some certain kind of parts like like jumping and in the tapes and stuff like that. Uh, K Hop is a student run studio. And one of the things that this, the students use a lot is our Chiron graphics generator. And it's hitched up to an Apple computer. And they learn how to run the programs and how to edit the graphics onto their programs, the titles, the roll closes, and so forth. The Chiron, it's real fun. When we work with the students, we always hope that in the future they will want to do more productions and they will perhaps even become involved in television production in their careers. And they have many ideas for productions they'd like to do over the next several years. A production that we're working on is a commercial for um, some kids that are coming to our school next year. And so we decided to make a commercial telling about Al Smith and the things that go on in Al Smith. I've been kind of um, thinking about doing, working on a music video or a promotional video. I'd like to kind of produce some TV shows and do a couple movies and stuff. Well, in the future, I'd like to go to college and learn more, to, more about camera artwork and then start taping movie pictures. I like doing plays and um, stuff like that because it's I like the acting. 
Now let's look at some segments from programs which students have created over the 1987-88 school year. We're here to tell you about the new playground equipment at Meadowbrook School. Last year, fifth graders in Mrs. Shank's class were given the opportunity to design a playground. This is Mike Ergen at Meadowbrook School, and I'm here to talk about the playground equipment, and I'm interviewing the designers. This is Luke Johnson, a sixth grader and a designer. And Luke, how do you feel about the project, and how did you get involved? Well, um, I know all the kids were complaining that um, it didn't have a lot to do, and the only people that could play on it were the kids, so um, the principal chose a class, which happened to be Mrs. Shank's class, and we all got into groups, and we just chose different things for the playground. The students' plans were combined and then submitted to the school's PTA. At the end of the year, the PTA had $5,000 in their fund, and there was $500 that was given to Meadowbrook from the Hopkins 270 Foundation and during the summer the committee was given permission to order equipment. Phase one of the plan was installed over summer and now the students have a chance to enjoy it. the new playground equipment is it fun or boring or what well it's real fun and I like the monkey bars how about you I think it's fun and I like the swings and every other part of the playground equipment do you like the new playground equipment yes I do I think it um adds a lot more for the kids to do out here at recess besides just the swings how do you think the kids like it Oh, they enjoy it a lot. These rocks have been the subject of much controversy. There have been complaints of children throwing them, tripping on them, and having them stuck in shoes. However, they do make a nice soft landing. What do you see as some of the bad points or drawbacks of the new equipment? Uh, hopefully there are no drawbacks. Uh, uh, I understand that uh, there's a number of uh, parents that feel that we should uh, spend some money on uh, making a, a soccer field or a baseball field so there's other places for the kids to play, but I think for the most part everybody's really excited about having new playground equipment. The goal is to have Phase 2, or the second group of playground equipment installed by the summer of 1987, and Phase 3 installed by the summer of 1988. Do you think we'll be able to keep up with the schedule? Uh, after seeing the early results from our fall fundraiser, I think we're right on schedule. Uh, we don't anticipate any delays, and hopefully we'll be able to complete the whole uh, program by 1988. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the equipment? Well, just that uh, it's very new, modern equipment that I believe is, is very safe and, and should be uh, very conducive for our children's uh, physical growth and development, and uh, we are anxious to complete our, our task. How do you feel about the kids' reaction to your new playground equipment? Well, I think they were very excited and happy about the new playground equipment for young and older children. How do you feel about it? They play on it a lot more, and it's fun for them. I think they enjoy a lot, you can tell. The overall opinion is that the new equipment is exciting and fun. We made the tape Television Magic to help younger children 
realize that everything they see on commercials are not real. And, mm -hmm. and tomorrow we're going into a second grade classroom in our school to just tell them about it and teach some more to them about it. <laughs> you guys, this is so boring. We're telling I just no kidding. Why are we all sitting here reading magazines and playing paper, rock, scissors when somebody could be in here asking us to help them? I know we want to use the camera. We formed a production company. Now all we need is a project. Yeah. I wish yeah. someone would come for us to help them. I know. <sighs> so boring. Year except for one thing. They all want to watch so much television and I'm not sure what to do about it and they believe everything that they hear on television. Oh, I was hoping that you could get together and make a tape for me that would help teach the children about the techniques used on television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good yes. idea. Yes. Even, though, even, like though, this. even though we're so busy with all of our other customers, yeah. but yeah. I'm sure we could squeeze you in. Yeah. Good. I'll be back in three days. How does that sound? That sounds fine. That's great. Fine. That's fine. Yeah. Fun. Bye. No, oh, I don't really like that idea. No. It's kind of dumb. Oh, it sticks. I wouldn't like either. I've got an idea. Without any customers. No. We're never gonna make this show. Hey, I've got an idea. Yes. Why don't we make an actual commercial to show the kids yes. how yeah. it really works? All right. Yeah. yeah. Good idea. Let me think. explosive battles with your friends. You can beat the bad guys. You can be a hero. Do you want to be part of the action? Yeah! Then buy your Camel Warriors at a toy store near you. Other Camel Warriors, planes and tanks, not included. So, what do you think, guys? It's a yeah, good idea. idea. Close ups to make toys seem more lifelike and real. Oh, 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 yeah, and it, and it would also illustrate how fast talk and loud music are used to create excitement. Camel Warriors, the new exciting toy for everyone. You can have explosive battles with your friends. You can beat the bad guys. You can be a hero. Do you want to be part of the action? Yeah! It would also show how extra parts in the colorful background make the toy seem more fun. Other camel warriors, planes, and tanks not included. Yeah, and don't forget what the toy is like after you bring it home. Wow. Whoopee. This is so fun. Wow. I have another idea. How about this type of commercial? I'd much rather be listening. 
listen to my Bon Jovi tape on my new Walkman. <laughs> And whatever comes our way Yeah, I gotta go make it happen Oh, those are cool! Let yeah. me try yeah. <laughs> Ock Dog Toys, if it were any more real, it wouldn't be a toy Yeah, that commercial would show how real would be mixed up with fantasy Get your motor running Head out on the highway Yeah, and how about the loud sounds of music? They certainly make a toy car seem more real. You guys, I think we've come up with some super ideas. Let's get to work. Mm -hmm. We hope you've learned a little about techniques used in commercials to make you want to buy the product. TV commercials are very powerful ways to sell. You must always remember that you have the most power of all. You can take this TV remote control and turn off the TV. We hope to continue to get students of all ages involved in television production. Um, because this way we get them being an active viewer as opposed to a passive viewer when they sit at home and with their families watch those seven hours of television a day that the average family watches. A fascinating look at an innovative media program in the Hopkins schools. Our thanks to Sue McLeod and Jeanette Shoup, to District Media Coordinator Dan Eckberg, and to all the students who participated in today's program. Mariella, who calls herself Ami, is 11 years old. She is a very bright little girl and very lonely. She has no friends in the neighborhood and only casual school friends. But this changes through a friendship with Polly. Polly becomes best friends with Emmy and her retarded older brother, Morton. Through this friendship, Mariella begins to take chances to reach out to others and recognizes her family's importance to her. This story is a rich study in character development rather than one of action. In fact, at times, the pace is incredibly slow. This is recommended for grades five through eight. This book is on the 1987 American Library Association Notable Children's Book List. M.E. and Morton by Sylvia Cassidy, reviewed by Juanita Foster, Children's Services Librarian at the Brooklyn Park Community Library, Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Thanks for joining us on All About Kids. Please tune in again. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency.